This is the Sensoride 5, and Solomon bills it as a comfortable shoe that works on a variety of terrain. The use case is a bit more narrow for me, but I'm okay with that. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and I'm a non-elite runner who reviews shoes here on YouTube. And today I'm gonna be taking a look at the Solomon Senseride 5. Now before I give you my thoughts on this shoe, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that Solomon sent me for the purpose of review, so I did not have to pay for these shoes. However, Solomon's not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and nobody's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Solomon Senseride 5. First, let's get to some specs on the shoe because there's been a lot that's changed. This year, they're using a new Energy Save Midsole Foam, a material that Solomon says can provide plush cushioning and adaptive response. So kind of both ends of the spectrum in terms of what a foam can do. And they're delivering it to us in the Sense Ride 5 in a 29.6 millimeters of stack height in the heel configuration with a 8.3 millimeter drop. So there's 21.3 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. A very precise number. Usually you don't get tenths of a millimeter in terms of reported stack height and drop. On the outsole of the Sense Ride 5, we see Solomon's Contra Grip in a reconfigured lug pattern that's 3.5 millimeters deep. In the back, the lugs are really working to make sure that your heel has a lot of traction in case you're coming downhill. And in the front, the lugs are oriented in a way that you're gonna be able to get a lot of grip as you're going uphill or pushing off for that next stride. Now for the upper, Solomon is using what they're calling their 3D mesh, which provides lots of ventilation. There's a toe cap at the front to protect you from some of the elements and a little bit against kicking some rocks and roots as you're running. And there's a moderate amount of padding through the tongue and through the heel cup, which makes it feel very comfortable without anything getting in the way. There's a little bit of a pull tab up top. And then there is, of course, the staple for the Sense Ride, the lace garage for the quick lace system, which I always have a really hard time with and I'm just not a huge fan of, but I know a lot of you guys really do like it. Altogether, this comes together at a respectable trail weight of 286 grams or 10.08 ounces. All right, now that we've talking about those specs on paper, let's get it out onto the trails and see what it was like to actually run in it. And I've tested the Sense Ride 3. So two years ago is the last time I tested the Sense Ride. And I'm very happy to report that I love the changes that they made for the Sense Ride 5. I still don't think that it's quite a road to trail shoe or a kind of a do it all shoe uh, because I feel like on firmer surfaces. I don't really love it, even though that energy save midsole foam, Solomon tells us it's supposed to provide a lot of squishiness or plush cushioning. I'm not really feeling that, or maybe I just need to kind of like translate it a little bit. I'm more of a roads guy myself, and I do get on the trails a little bit. And every time someone from the trail world tells me something's like super plush, I always have to be like, do you mean plush or do you mean like trail plush? And I feel like this is more in the trail plush where I feel like on pavement, if it's a dirt road that's hard packed, like an access road, I'm not sure that I'd love to do a ton of running in the Sense Ride 5 on those kinds of more firm materials. But I also feel like that's not what the Sense Ride 5 is for. The Sense Ride 5 is for running trails, getting out there, getting dirty, getting into some slippery stuff, whether the terrain underfoot is just unstable because it's not hard packed or maybe because the conditions are a bit messy. And that's really what I did most of my testing in the Sense Ride 5 for was some messy conditions here in the admittedly flat Midwest west of the northern United States. I do have some trails available to me here near my home, and they're not the most intense trails that one can imagine for testing out a trail shoe, but it is mud season here, and I had plenty of mud to encounter. And in those kinds of wet, slippery, messy conditions, 
I really found like the Sense Ride 5 was a lot of fun to be able to run around in, and I felt like the level of firmness of the midsole really matched up well with the three and a half millimeter lugs that are in this shoe to provide a lot of fun grip without feeling extra harsh. It just felt like kind of the right amount of harsh or the right amount of comfort for the kinds of conditions that I had encountered. Normally these kinds of conditions would have me completely avoiding the trails altogether and opting for some road miles, but I've got Boston coming up. I wanted to make sure I'm still getting in a lot of rolling hills and elevation changes and working the legs in slightly a different way than I might normally do for a regular marathon training block. So I felt like being able to have a pair of shoes like this was a lot of fun and very useful for me to be able to mix up the training a little bit and get in some fun miles out here in the woods. In terms of other aspects of the fit, I think it's really improved over the Sense Ride 3. That was the last Sense Ride that I ran in. That one, I really felt like my foot was locked into what felt like a hiking boot rather than into a trail running shoe. This one, the Sense Ride 5, the materials are a lot more forgiving. It just kind of moves with your foot as your foot is bending. I feel like the upper it just kind of sits on your foot a lot better than the previous version as well. I did go with my regular size 9 on this shoe and I felt like that was the right size for me. All right, now let's get to some of the summary portions of the video where I give you some of my concluding thoughts and comparisons and pairing options. I think that the Solomon Sense Ride 5 is best for messy trail runs or shorter, faster trail runs as well. I really wouldn't recommend it personally as a road to trail shoe, but it is a pretty versatile trail shoe nonetheless. Now, in terms of pairing options, I think that there's a couple of things that you could look at if you wanna stay in the Solomon family. Another shoe which I've been testing but haven't really put out the review for yet is a Solomon Aero Glide. I feel like this shoe has a lot of similarities to me as the Sense Ride 5 where it's a little bit firmer than I would like for its intended use case, but when you can get it on some of those slightly softer surfaces, it is an absolute dream to be able to run it for a really long time and I'm having a lot of fun with it. And the shape of the shoe in terms of the toe box and the overall fit on the foot uh, is very reminiscent. So I feel like these are two shoes that could pair very well together, one for your trail days and one for your road days. I feel like if you like this, you're probably going to like the Aero Glide as well. Now let's talk about the buying guide. For this shoe, it comes out at 140 bucks and I really like the price for that shoe for the amount of shoe and performance and technology that you're getting in the Sense Ride. Now there is the Sense Ride 4 that's still available, not on the Solomon website, unless you're like a size 13, but you can find it at some of the other outdoor retailers. That shoe's $90, but I also feel like that shoe is significantly different than the Sense Ride 5. So if you like kind of like the older Solomon shoes that are, I think, a little bit more kind of like um, ski boot ish than they are trail running shoe ish, then I think save up a couple of bucks and get the Sense Ride 4. Now, there are other competitors in the market, so let's take a look at where that $140 really stacks up. I think one other shoe that compares pairs well with the Senseride is the Challenger 7 from Hoka. I have the Gore-Tex version here, and I like both of these shoes in very similar situations. Like the messier, the better, the drier, the more hard packed, the less I like each of these two shoes. So I feel like these go well head to head. This Gore-Tex version comes in at 160, so you're paying a little bit of a premium to get that weather protection. And the non-Gore-Tex version of the Challenger comes in at 145. So between the 145 and the 140, I think that the Sense Ride 5 wins on two counts. It's a little bit cheaper, and I do think that it performs a little bit better than the Challenger, but they are very similar styles of shoe. The other shoe that I think that also compares well is the Peregrine 12. Now, this is another shoe from Saucony where they've already released the next version, Peregrine 13, but I did have a lot of fun in the Peregrine 12 in, again, similar conditions as I like the Sense Ride 5, where it's like the messier the better, or if it's gonna be dry, hopefully it's a short fast day. The Peregrine 12 originally was 130 bucks, but it's right now on sale for under $100 because that Peregrine 13 is out right now. So another area that you can save a couple of bucks. I feel like in terms of like which is the most built up or stripped down, I feel like the Sense Ride 5 is a little bit more built up, a little bit more comfort oriented, and this, the Peregrine 12 is a little bit more stripped down and maybe a little bit more race oriented. So uh, depending on what you're looking for in that trail shoe, uh, you're gonna be getting some things, losing some things, and that price point may or may not 
matter all that much to you. So I just wanted to give you a couple of options to think about in this space from 100 to 145 or 160 dollars in terms of trail shoes that I like primarily for messy days or days where the footing underfoot might be a little bit questionable. These are some good shoes to have in your arsenal. So if you have any other questions about any of these shoes, feel free to put them in the comments down below or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?